This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More about them later in the video. Most engineers dream about building super tall or super slender structures sometime in their career. However, there's some major problems and faults that we need to overcome to allow that to occur. So how tall is too tall for a building? My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Building super tall or super slender structures is something that is not very cost efficient. The design and construction of these super tall, super slender structures becomes really inefficient the higher we go. The cost of vertical transport is greatly increased. The structural and lateral forces that it needs to resist become exponentially higher, meaning that you need greater structure to resist the same load underneath the same footprint. Loads that actually needs to resist over that same footprint are grow exponentially. So the foundations into the ground need to greatly increase. So as we go up, we also need to go down into the foundation, socketing into soil. That means the structure doesn't settle significantly. So it's not actually just the settlement into the ground that's actually a structural issue as well. But also as you build a concrete structure up, concrete hydrates and as it hydrates, it also settles. So there's additional forces from both the shrinkage of the concrete causing differential movement between the floors the load on top of it, and as it, the load goes on, the column slowly shortens. So you'll have axial shortening of the column, both over the short term and the long term, meaning the structure will shrink over time, even if it's not settling into the ground. And when you're especially on the lower floors, if you're trying to transport everyone to the top, the area that's actually required to house the elevators can be quite significant on the floor plan, and the size of the columns to resist the loads over are also increased. So the lower floors become really inefficient and you lose a lot of sellable area. So why do people want to go up? Well, there's a number of different reasons. Well, sometimes it's just ego is you wanna make sure that you're the tallest building out there. So sometimes people push the limbs a little bit further to say that their structure's taller than anything else in that area. Sometimes it's footprint, such as we can see in New York, where you've got very little land that you can actually build on. So they wanna maximize the amount of floor space they can get by going up as high as physically possible, get the big sale prices that they're looking for. Now there is a restriction you can see with those super slender towers. There's not many places in the world that can build as tall as New York does in as most slender a space. You see, there's two classifications of tall buildings. You have really tall ones, which are more like Jeddah and Burj Khalifa, which are more that buttress core, that more expand out in a buttress form. So the base of the structure is really large, meaning they can go significantly higher. Or if you have those super slender or pencil-like structure into the sky, seemingly being supported by nothing. The engineering behind them looks really impressive. So as we go up, there's a number of different problems that we need to deal with. On the lower level, say somewhere between 10 stories, 15 stories, or 20 stories, there or thereabouts, the cost of construction isn't significantly increased. Once we start to go above this level, and the costs sort of change around a bit, depending on where you are. You see, between 15 stories to 40 stories is where some of the design parameters change. So your columns start to get bigger, your core, needs to take maybe a greater portion of your area, but also the design constraints are slightly changed. Below 10 stories, typically most structures are gonna be governed in most areas by earthquake. Now, depending on which area of the world you are, sometimes that might be a little bit higher, sometimes that might be a little bit lower. But once you're getting upwards of that 40 story level is when earthquake becomes less significant and wind starts to take over as your structure is rising up into the sky. Once we start to move above those 40 story levels is where the significant cost increases come in. You see, above this level, you need to start to think about vertical transport and fire escapes. Below this level, you can typically get there by a giant fire truck. But upwards of those 40, 50, 60, 70 stories, is where the cost increase significantly increases per square area. And where you see the significant reduction of cost on the lower floors, as the structure to be able to resist the loads above is significantly increased. So this is where you need to make sure the cost of land is available for you to go above those 200 meters, because you need to be able to sell it at a premium price to get your money back on the construction that you've just spent. Are you actually just going there for ego or are you actually going to make money and add benefit to the given area? You may have heard about Skillshare in the past where it's a perfect place to learn a lot of those soft skills, whether you're trying to learn about photography, filming, time management, or even resource management. There's a lot of different courses that be there for you to help you reinvent your career. And now's a perfect time to jump on this opportunity. 
You see, for me, I need a lot of skills that I need to learn to help with this type of content I'm producing. And it's a perfect place where you can learn about photography, filming, and all the skills that will help you be a great content creator. You may have seen a lot of YouTube videos about time management from a content creator called Ali Abdal. He also has a great content on Skillshare to help you with that time management and making sure that you're getting as much out of the each day as physically possible. He was originally doing YouTube and being a doctor, both of which are really hard and time consuming. You see, doctor, you're working day and night, but he's also able to manage that and build a YouTube channel at the same time. It's really just a matter of understanding the productivity equation and then figuring out which bits of it we need to optimize to apply to our own lives. Hi everyone, my name is Ali and I'm a doctor working full time in the UK's National Health Service. On the side, I've got a YouTube channel, a weekly podcast, a weekly email newsletter, a blog, and three And I'm currently watching his their. course so that I can help prove my time management skills as well. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. Now let's get back to the content. So when we're looking at these two different types of buildings, either that super tall building of the Burj Khalifa, which has a large base for it to fix down, or those super slender buildings, they have different concepts that you need to deal with. So for example, the Burj Khalifa have to be designed to be shaped with the wind to help significantly reduce the wind loads. Otherwise your structure will just get enormously big. So what they've done, they've specifically shaped a town like Burj Khalifa to be rough and have additional curves to have what was what they say is to confuse the wind. So it means the wind can't form the eddies behind it that cause a significant sway to the structure. Where something like a super slender tower may also need some sort of areas and shaping like this to help reduce the loads. Because it is slender, it doesn't have as much stiffness as something that the Burj Khalifa has. So that means that it's subject to not only just the sway of the wind, but maybe a lot of people don't want to live in there as they're constantly feeling seasick from the building rocking backwards and forwards which makes it not really functional and suitable for what it's doing. So in those type of buildings, typically when you're getting super slender or super soft structures, is you need to put what they call is a tune mass dampener in them. What that does, it helps reduce the acceleration of the structure. So it's reducing the acceleration so people don't feel as the building's actually swaying backwards and forwards. Probably the one of the most famous tune mass dampeners is at Taipei 101. That's on display that not only helps for humans receive comfort, but also helps in big events to help reduce those significant loads that they can impart on the building. Probably the biggest constraint from people going higher are two things. It's either the ground conditions below them can't support the structure up above, or what type of lateral systems can they put into place to resist the forces that they see. You see upwards of 80, 90 stories, you can get away with what they call is a central core outrigger system. So they've got the central core going up, they have outriggers at roughly different heights, so either at mid height or third points, and that allows them to make a stiffer structure. So you can see what an outrigger is, it extends the building out at different levels and changes the curvature of the structure back so that it means that it's not as tilted over as it would have been if it didn't have these elements. The best way that you can think about this is if you've got skiers and they've got their poles that they bring out from a long distance. Essentially, by bringing the poles out, they're able to bring the forces to the outer edge, significantly increasing the stiffness for that floor and pulling back some of that twist action that was occurring, meaning the building can be more straight. Once you're getting above this level, it's when you need to look at a lot of additional systems to bring that stiffness out, as you need to bring the stiffness to the outer edges of the structure. This is where we're looking at super slender buildings. Typically, they've got the bracing elements on the outer edges of the structure. So you can either do this through a tube and tube with a die grid type system or structural cores physically going to the outer edges, like you can see with 111 West 77 Street, with the core going to the outer perimeter of the structure. And once you're getting even further than what a tube and tube system can achieve, you need to start looking at additional systems where you're spreading the base of the structure out to get that additional leverage that you need to resist those lateral forces. So this is where you're getting the buttress Y type systems such as in Burj Khalifa or Jeddah Tower. So before we consider about designing these super tall or super slender structures, we need to consider about the additional cost that it will impart on the buildings and the local area to build such a tall building. Despite engineers coming with innovative solutions to solve these structural problems and make the impossible reality through these super tall and super slender structures. And if you're interested in designing super efficient structures, you're interested in the rules of efficient concrete design that I'll have linked here. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there is two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member with the links in the below description. Without the support of my YouTube or Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.